Hey everyone, Victor is here and welcome back to Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we are going over fun organic chemistry mechanisms. In this video, I want to look at this transformation where we start by reacting acid chloride with methanol in the presence of pyridine. But instead of a simple ester that we would normally expect for a reaction like that, or at least that's what we teach in an undergraduate organic chemistry curriculum, we get a much more complicated species with the pyridine moiety encapsulated as the part of this molecule. Now, the transformation of both products will follow the same pathway, so I'm going to just look uh, at one of them and I'm going to work through the mechanism leading us towards the formation of this first product over here. So first of all, let me clean up the board a little, so I have a little bit more space for the mechanism, and the very first thing that I'm going to do here, I'm going to draw my pyridine molecule. Now, since pyridine is actually more nucleophilic than at your average alcohol and then methanol that we have floating here around, Plus, we have a ton of that pyridine in our solution because, well, we're using it as a solvent, the first step in this reaction is actually going to be the nucleophilic attack from our pyridine onto our acid chloride, so I'm going to show this attack like so, giving me the following tetrahedral intermediate. Next, as we would expect to see in any kind of acyl substitution reaction, we are going to see the leaving group dissociation, so the electrons on the oxygen going to go down and kick my chlorine as a leaving group out. As a result, we are going to get this intermediate over here. Now, here is something rather interesting about this intermediate. Acid chlorides are fairly acidic on their own and can be easily deprotonated by a means such as, well, pyridine that we have floating around. Well, this guy that we have just made is actually even more acidic in the alpha position, so I'm talking about this alpha position over here, due to a much stronger inductive effect that the pyridinium ion exhibits on our molecule. This nitrogen with a positive charge pulls the electron density towards itself like crazy, and that makes our alpha position fairly acidic. And since we do have a ton of pyridine floating around, which is, of course, a base, we are going to see the easy deprotonation of this intermediate as well. So, to show that, I'm going to redraw my intermediate uh, with the pyridine molecule, and I will show how the pyridine is going to snatch this proton over here like so, giving me the corresponding enolate intermediate. Now, enolates are nucleophiles, and the pyridinium intermediate that I have over here, this part of the molecule is very electrophilic, so those two guys are going to react with each other. So I'm going to show the electrons on the oxygen going to go down, then we are going to be attacking our pyridinium like so, making a new carbon-carbon bond between this carbon over here and the carbon of our six-membered ring. As a result, we are going to end up with the following species. And the new bond that I have just formed is right over here, so I am going to indicate that as my new bond. Now, finally, we are ready to make our ester, so we are going to bring the methanol that I have floating around, and I am going to show how this methanol is going to attack our electrophilic carbonyl, so these electrons go here and attack the carbon, electrons go up, electrons go down and kick our leaving group out, which in this case is going to be the spiridinium moiety. And after the final proton transfer, we are going to end up with our final product, our final molecule, ester, however you want to call that. So I am combining a few steps over here, and I am not showing the proton transfer at the end, but those are the typical steps in the acyl substitution, so if you need a refresher, you can look it up, I do have a tutorial on that as well. So, basically, as you can see, while we might commonly teach acyl substitution reactions in an undergrad curriculum um, using pyridine as a solvent, in reality, these reactions are virtually never done in pyridine because they end up doing this type of nonsense. But that's pretty cool, right? Now, next week, I'm going to look at this reaction over here. Can you figure out how this uh, mechanism works? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can tell me that by hitting the like button and subscribe for more if you haven't done so yet. 
check out this video next and I will see you next time.